Hello everyone, welcome to today's session on how to perform a load flow analysis. Now if you're new to this channel, kindly smash that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you get notified the instant I upload a new video. Now in our last session, I explain the parameters required to perform a load flow analysis for the power grid transformers and lump load now you can find that in the video i last uploaded which is how to draw a single line diagram today i explained the concept of load flow analysis the objectives and the methods of load flow analysis and if you didn't get that explanation it means you're not part of our ETAP community however if you wish to join our ETAP community then simply drop a comment below requesting to join and you'll be added as soon as possible remember it is absolutely free so like I said I've explained parameters required for power grid transformers and lump loads however today i'll be explaining parameters for transmission line now firstly you double click on the transmission line and the first thing you need is the length however we'll be leaving this as one kilometer the next parameter is parameter page obviously so we'll be choosing conductor type as aluminium so we'll go to the conductor library I will use Pirelli Cricket. Okay. Final setting is for the configuration page. The height 12.8 meters and the spacing between conductors 1.5 to 4. Now these ones will automatically update. We press OK. Now, having done that, the next thing we need to do is to set loading and generation categories. And in order to do that, we go to project, settings, loading and generation categories. Now, this is to create multiple operating conditions and to verify the load flow analysis with it. So, for AC loads, the loading categories will be peak load normal load and maximum load we don't have a dc load model so we're just going to the generation now the generation will do maximum voltage, maximum GV, which is generation voltage, normal GV, which is normal generation voltage, and minimum GV. And OK. And now we have to model the power grid. Go to rating. Now we can see that the generation categories which we just set from the project is already showing here. Maximum generation voltage, normal generation voltage, and minimum generation voltage. Now we'll be using IEEE voltage regulation principle of plus or minus 5%. So maximum generation voltage should be plus 5%, which is 105. Minimum should be minus 5%, which is 95 and OK. Next, we'll be modeling the loads, name plates. Now we can see the settings, peak load, normal load, and maximum load. Now the peak load should be 90%, normal load should be 70%, and maximum load should be 20%. Now we'll do this for all the other lump loads. An easy way to locate them is to click here and you see all the loads. 
or you go one by one by this arrow. Now I'll quickly model this. Twenty. Four more to go. Final one, ninety, seventy, twenty, and click OK. So having done that, next thing we do is to go into load flow analysis. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Now, in the analysis, we realize that this part has changed. Basically, what you need to know is this. This is to run load flow. This is to automatically run load flow. Now, the difference between this and this is when this is enabled, load flow runs once and stops. However, when this is enabled, load flow runs. If you make any change, to any component here, the load flow automatically runs again to show you the result of the change you made. But with this, it won't run again until you manually click it. This is for alerts. I will explain this later. This is to get the results from your load flow. This is to display units. This is basically what you want to be displayed on your single line diagram and basically that's what you need for now the next thing we'll be explaining is the load flow study case click on this now someone asked me the methods where you can find them methods for performing load flow analysis you can find them here <coughs> sorry however like i mentioned in the Lesson today, gas Gaussian method is not here, but you can find it in older versions of ETAP. Loading page. Now we can see the loading category and generation category, which we set earlier. Peak load, normal load, maximum load, maximum GV, normal GV, minimum GV. We can find it here. For the adjustment page. ETAP uses the positive impedance tolerance for load flow calculations. However, it applies the negative impedance tolerance for short circuit calculations. Now, coming to alerts. According to IEEE voltage level, which I already stated before, it uses a voltage regulation of plus or minus 5%. So, when, when that is set on ETAP, any voltage deviation above that limit is seen as critical. Any voltage deviation above plus or minus 5%, anything that is not within that range is seen as critical. And ETAP will display that red. However, you can set marginal, which is between 2. So for marginal, is 102 two percent not up to 105 for over voltage however for under voltage is 98 percent not up to 95 percent and marginal displays pink marginal means it can be managed it is not 
100% efficient, however it can be managed. Critical means it has to be improved. So, okay. Now the next thing we'll do is to create study cases for the various scenarios which we want to perform. Now we click on the study case again, click copy. And now we are saying copy LF to LF1. <coughs> the first one, we'll name it peak LFC. First scenario, peak LFC. LFC for load flow case. Click OK. We'll go to loading. Now this is the difference. For peak LFC, we are going to be considering the worst case over voltage, which is minimum load. Oh, sorry, sorry. I made a mistake. In this project, loading and generation categories, this should be minimum load. I think I already put maximum there. Sorry. Minimum load. Okay. So, come here. We have our peak LFC. So loading, we use minimum load and maximum generation voltage. That's for the worst case over voltage effect. Then we click OK. We come back and we now have our peak LFC. So we need another one. Copy. For normal LFC, normal LFC, okay. And in normal LFC, we use normal load and normal generation. Now we copy again and create the final one, which is minimum. LFC. Click OK. And the minimum LFC is the worst case under voltage. Worst case under voltage scenario. And we use the minimum minimum generation voltage. And the maximum load. Okay. Now we have four study cases. However, we'll be neglecting this. So let's start with the peak load flow case. Now change this to prompt. The reason for changing that to prompt is so that whenever you run the load flow analysis, it will ask you for an output file name. So we can differentiate between the three scenarios. Now, we are going to run the load flow analysis. Prompts. Now remember we are in peak LFC. So we are expecting peak LFC results. So, okay. And load flow is running. And now we can see that for the worst case over voltage, bus one is at 105% and it displays red being critical. Because the generation, remember, we set it at 105%. These buses are slowly experiencing a voltage drop due to the branch elements. Branch elements are transmission line and transformers. And we can see that even at the downstream, we are having over voltage effects, which is 103.7%. That is for the peak load flow case. Now, if we go to normal load flow and prompt, 
and we run the load flow analysis normal result sorry normal lfc result Now for the normal load flow report, we can see that all these buses are operating within the steady state limit of plus or minus 5% voltage, whereas these ones are marginally operating, meaning they are within the range of plus or minus 3%, but they are not up to critical, that's why they are not red, they are pink. So if we go to the last one, we've done for peak, we've done for normal, this one is minimum. Go to prompt again. And we run the load flow. Minimum LFC results. Click OK. Now this minimum is for the worst case under voltage report. Now you can see that all the buses are critically loaded. That's why they are display red, meaning we are suffering a high level of under voltage effect on each bus. So, however, if we go to the normal load flow, let's use this. This is without any of the configurations. This is the result. Okay, we're using maximum. Let me create a new this is speak load. Let's say no effect. Let's call it no zero effect. Call the generation. Let's say zero effect too. Now this zero effect means as it is. So in this rating now, I'm going to use zero effect. Hundred zero, and for loads. Now this is where we set this one loading. Zero effect generation zero effect now I don't think I configured that for the loads so let's see loading should be hundred percent for each of the loads now we are creating another scenario which will cause zero effect since the loading should be at 100% lump 7 and lump 8 and click OK and then we run the load flow analysis to see the effect Now we can see that from the upstream, we are experiencing a gradual voltage drop. However, it is still within permissible limits. But when it starts getting to this point, we are seeing a critical voltage level. Thus, there is need for voltage improvement in this network. And that will be after how to interpret voltage how to interpret the flow results now we can see this is in percentage this in percentage is the voltage operating level clicking on unit now it shows us this now this is the active power flow 
is in kilowatts and this is the reactive power flow you can see it for each bus bar active and reactive power flow now we can change this from active and reactive power flow to active power and the amperage now we can see we are having 47 amps 47.4 amps whereas after the transformer steps down the voltage we're having 142 amps so we can see the amperage flow we can see the apparent power flow we can also see the reactive power flow and active power flow this will end our session for today if you are yet to subscribe smash that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you get notified once we upload a new video see you in our next session thank you very much